Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to more of the Mario Party Superstars playthrough. Last week, we played through Yoshi's Tropical Island. I uh, had a very nice uh, board playthrough on that board, and we're going to be moving on to the second board of this game this weekend. So, let's go ahead and uh, get this started. As usual, we have to select our characters first. I think no matter what, we're going to have a bunch of characters from the uh, original cast of six. Because uh, I think we still have five of those and then only like one other character, so... It's looking like that's probably what's going to be uh, the roster for today's video anyway. Um, but yeah, we have uh, these three and then also these three we still need to play as here. Let's do this. I think I'm going to pick... Donkey Kong today. Then we're gonna have Yoshi. We're gonna have Wario. And let's go ahead of the two female characters. Let's pick Daisy. Yeah, let's go with this for today. Gonna set the difficulty once again to hard. And for today's board, we're gonna be moving on to the next one, which is Spaceland from Mario Party 2. Since we are playing a Mario Party 2 board, there are gonna be some uh, new additions that we uh, didn't see in the uh, Mario Party 1 board that we played last week. So we'll definitely touch on those when those become relevant. Um, but yeah, we're going to venture into the galaxy, but beware of the runaway spaceships and the Bowser beams. There's really just one beam, but still. And I believe that's all the settings. And yeah, let's go ahead and get this started. Okay, so welcome back to Spaceland. We've made it. This is Spaceland. A while ago on this space station, which is kind of far away, a battle commenced. A brave superstar vanquished an evil king and restored peace to the galaxy. Though the galaxy is at peace, signs of trouble lurk just over the horizon. That's why, now more than ever, the people of this galaxy need a savior. Will you step up and become the superstar that the people need? I think we can do that. Excellent. I can see you're the just the person for the job. But now that we're here, I've got some business to take care of. I'll see you later. Okay, and this continues, basically. Um, the way it does in the other boards as well, so let's go ahead and get the rundown here. Great, then let me explain. There's a timer here that counts down and you pass by. What's that about? A Bowser-shaped satellite hovers over the board. Better watch out. The Sniffit Patrol operates out of two locations. Are they here to fight crime? There seems to be a lot going on here, so don't let your guard down for just a second. First, we'll decide the turn order. Okay. Um, so yeah, for the most part, um, I feel like Spaceland uh, doesn't really change too much. I mean, I don't think really a lot of the boards change that much. I think it's really just the last two boards that kind of... Oh, no, I think even Birthday Cake kind of changes around quite a bit as well. Um, but yeah, it's pretty much the same layout. There might be like a few alterations uh, based on the fact that this is a different engine from uh, the original Mario Party 2. Um, as usual, the star will be moving around. So every time you get one star, you'll have to chase it down to a different location. And... Um, yeah, it, it's pretty similar to how it is um, originally. Wow. 
Okay, so um, as far as the main differences between, uh, or not really differences, but things we can expect on this board, uh, since this is the first non-Mario Party 1 board that we're playing, uh, there are obviously some additions to this that, uh, you know, technically wouldn't have been additions or features of the original game. Uh, but uh, there are skeleton key doors, so getting skeleton keys will start to become relevant now. At least for this board and then the other Mario Party 2 board and then the Woody Woods. Um, and also, the Koopa Bank is also a thing too. So, as usual, if you pass the bank, you have to pay... Um, in this game, you have to pay three coins. Um, later on, you have to pay a little more, but uh, it's just three to start. I'll go ahead and grab a mushroom here from uh, Bobbing Balloons. And um, whenever you land on the bank space, any coins that have been deposited into the bank, you will actually receive. So that's pretty much this uh, board in a nutshell. Uh, one thing you have to look out for, especially at the very beginning, is that uh, you could get stuck during the first straightaway for a very long time because of the happening space. The happening space will kind of cause you to go back to start, so to speak. So you got to kind of look out for that. Um, but yeah, we have a uh, new mini game here. Uh, this is a game that, uh, by its name, you should not recognize, but by what you see on screen, uh, this is a very familiar mini game. This is actually uh, Shell Shocked uh, from Mario Party 2. However, it is called. Uh, tread carefully now. Uh, the reason why they changed it, uh, shell shock is also a term that's used to uh, describe those who go through psychological disturbance and trauma um, caused by prolonged exposure to active warfare and combat. Uh, so as a result, I think they just kind of changed the minigame uh, just to break any association with that. And I think that's a fair reason to change the name of a minigame. It just seemed like a safer and better thing to do. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get this going here. Um, honestly, I do think this game controls pretty well. I mean, I thought the original kind of controlled pretty well. And now that it's on like a different system and, uh, you know, it's got more visual updates as well. That does look pretty good as well. And I got incredibly lucky with uh, all the computer players seemingly going after each other, but not me whatsoever. So that was kind of nice. Okay, so very good start, but uh, like I said, we do have the major challenge of getting out of this straightaway. So I'm not going to celebrate just yet. Ooh, I just realized that, uh, I really want to get that star, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get the star this turn if I use my mushroom, because I'll have to pay the bank. So I'm honestly thinking about not using my mushroom. Okay, well now I probably will use my mushroom, but, yep, Daisy's going to hit that happening space, so that's going to push us all the way back to start. There is a way to counteract this, though, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do it. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and do it now. So I'm going to go ahead and use my mushroom. Uh, the way to counteract this is... One thing you can do is just pay this guy. Pay the police officer to set up a patrol station. And uh, when that guy chases us back, if we do land in the happening space again, which we're going to because I just landed on one, um, we're actually going to go back even further to the top right part of the board. And this honestly just kind of breaks the train of, uh, you know, going back to start over and over again. I honestly do that just to kind of keep the game moving because otherwise... You're just going to get stuck in that very beginning section over and over and over again. And honestly, this isn't too bad because since I paid the money for the bank, um, I'm going to be able to not be the main coin leader right now. 
and that's going to cause uh, the other players to be focusing on them and not so much me. Although I think that just changed now that Wario lost all of his coins, so... Yeah, they're probably going to be going after me. I mean, Wario still has the most, but... Um, we'll have to see what happens, especially now that we're going to get a lot of coins from this. Maybe not from uh, this game, though. Uh, so here we have uh, Skewer Scurry from Mario Party 10. Uh, I'm not crazy about this game. It's kind of just whatever. I think I slightly prefer this in this version, but there's not really <laughs> there's not really much different. Just uh, look for the right places to stand. I kind of like staying in like one general location that's a. Uh, adjacent to um, all the other spaces that are safe this is a pretty good space because all you have to do is just walk either up, down, or right <laughs> depending on where they're coming from so yeah, it's a pretty um, pretty solid minigame well, not pretty solid, but pretty easy to do as the team of three as a single player, it's just, you know, kind of have to just get lucky with the other players screwing up not much to say beyond that. And this could be a problem because they're likely going to steal from me now since uh, me and Wario are kind of tied in first. I'm going to hope that Daisy steals from Wario and not me, but there might be the human player bias. Yep. Well, it looks like I'm stealing from Daisy then. <laughs> Ooh, 11 coins, damn. I could also just try to steal from Wario and then hope that Daisy will still have more coins by the next turn, so Yoshi could be encouraged to steal from her instead. I can honestly go either way here. Um... You know what? I think I am going to do that. I'm going to steal from Wario in the hopes that uh, Yoshi will steal from Daisy. Although I could end up just winning the next minigame, and that point is entirely moot. Although even if I win the next game, I shouldn't have the coin lead anyway, so we should be good. And I land on a Bowser space too. Damn. Well, at least this uh, ties me with the Bowser space star, at least for right now. Uh, Revolution? Oh, that's even worse. Damn, I actually got got it worse than Mario did right there. Well, again, at least I won't be a target for Boo. I mean, I can't exactly be a target for Boo right now. And I can't even pay money for this Versus game. Well, I guess that means that no matter what, I'm going to get something from this if I do well. And that's a lot of coins for a this early of a battle game. So we're going to get Ice Rink Risk. And yeah, there are no like battle games like that are just designated battle games. All battle games are four player games. Like just from the four player pool of games. There's no games that are just like only battle games or anything like that. Which, honestly, I think that makes sense. I thought it's always been kind of weird to have, like, games that are just specifically... Oh, my God. Ah, damn. Well, hey, like I said, I'm going to get rewarded regardless. And uh, Yoshi's going to steal from Wario anyway. It's also bad considering that <laughs> there's some battle games that have just always been like luck based or button mashing as well so it's kind of good that they've kind of gotten away from that identity and just realized you know battle games and four players should just be in general the same uh, so here we have picking panic from Mario Party 3 it's a two versus two um, it's it's a game not really crazy about this one 
have to definitely get used to the uh, throwing because some uh, some of the cherries you have to throw at different times compared to other ones. You definitely want to make sure you get the timing for the three and the two cherries. The one cherries are not as important, but I'll still see what I can do nonetheless. I don't know why I didn't grab that. Thankfully, we still won. Also, I gotta say, I am not really that crazy about the Woody design in this game. He just looks kind of soulless with, like, <laughs> his eyes just not having anything in them. I mean, I guess that's the way it was in the original, but it's two, but still, I don't know. It, because it's more detailed, it's just more noticeable. Man, Yoshi is not moving very far. He's not getting a lot of big rolls here. But yeah, it looks like Daisy is once again going to try to go the long way around. Which I don't know if that's the right play. I mean, it, it is the only way to get the star right now. Like, I mean, I can't deny that. We'll have to see. This is a... Blue space versus um, eight. Hold on. It doesn't show me where I can land because there's like multiple. Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight item, seven, eight lucky, seven, eight blue, and seven, eight item. I think I want to go for an item, and this will kind of keep me safe at least on that straightaway for right now. So let's go ahead and go this way and see if we can get another item minigame. Looks like we got Winner's Wheel from Mario Party 3. Probably my least favorite of the uh, <laughs> item minigames we have in this. Finish. I got a skeleton key, which um, it's not going to really help me right now, but later on it could definitely be very important. There is like a very, uh, there's a very dedicated item route that I love using in this particular board. Where you can uh, essentially just kind of go around in a circle for a good amount of time and not only get like uh, some good gains, but also, you know, you go past the item shop too, so it's a good path to go down. As Wario is also going to get a skeleton key. And once again, going to do a one versus three mini game. As so we get two bit or lose it from Mario Party Five. I think I actually mentioned in the uh, Mario Party Five uh, ranking video that while I'm not crazy about this game as much in Mario Party Five, I actually kind of prefer this one here. I just feel like it's easier to move the inner tubes in this. Well, I feel like it's like a little more stiff in the other game. I don't know. Could just be me who feels that way. I've definitely talked to people who, you know, actually prefer the original over this. But for me, I just kind of... I don't know. I just kind of like this one. We should have this, I believe, on the final straightaway. Oh yeah, there we go. So yeah, th th this game actually kind of elevates a little more for me in this game. I'd probably put it higher, or rank it higher here than the original. Kind of wish it was a little longer, but then if it, it was longer, it'd be like too much of an advantage for the one player, I feel like. <clears throat> okay, so Yoshi is finally going to get to Boo. And he is thankfully going to steal from Wario. That's going to... That's actually going to put him in the lead now, but... That's okay. I'd rather be, like, close to the lead, but not necessarily in the lead, at least at first. Because I don't like being targeted too early. And that's actually a really good roll for Daisy. That's going to get her past the bank. 
That's going to get her en route to the star, and she's going to have enough coins if she... Yeah, I think as long as she just doesn't lose any coins, she'll get the star next turn because of minigame pity coins. So she's actually in a good spot. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm also kind of in a good spot. But again, I think no matter what, she's going to get um, Toadette there. And I kind of want to see what's on that lucky space. So it's going to be kind of risky me doing this, but I'm doing this for the coins and the items. Yeah, I think this was worth it. Let's see. Wow, he's going to land on the same thing. He might actually go towards the star, though. Oh, no, he's going to do the same thing. I think he also sees... He also doesn't have enough coins, too, though. That's a, that's a very fair reason to not go that way. At least by AI standards. I still think my move was better, but that's just me. Uh, Crazy Cutters. I... I actually don't remember if we got this or not last time, but it's it's Crazy Cutters. It's about the same. The um, designs of the characters are a little more intricate, and I think that's honestly good. It's better than just like the very simple circles and stuff of the original. You know, it kind of actually makes it feel like you're trying to earn the victory here. Ooh, I kind of had a bad ending of the blooper. Still one, though. Yeah, I kind of like... <laughs> kind of went outside the line a little bit too much near the end. Also, the left side where, like, the cap of the blooper begins. I don't know if I actually got that correct either. An upset? How is that an upset? Just because I got that many more coins or something? Uh, I guess. Okay, so Yoshi. Yeah, Daisy's gonna get this no matter what. Um, oh yeah, she had, she also had this in her back pocket, too. What? What? Why? Probably thought she had nothing to lose. I don't know why she landed on the freaking red space, though. Uh, hold on, I just want to look at what other spaces she could have landed on. She could have landed on the versus space, the lucky space. I really don't get the reason why she did that. You could say that, like, maybe she's thinking ahead of time, like, you know, she doesn't want us to keep going in the right direction where we could get another star after she gets that one. Like, if the star appears, like, there's a star location on the bottom left. So maybe that, like, that could be a logical reason for doing that, but I don't know. I think that was just completely unnecessary. As Wario gets a hidden block as we get another mini game another one versus three hey look a mini game that is in this game for some reason so yeah here's piranha pursuit from uh, mario party one i don't know why they brought this back i will say that i do think it's a little better for the team of three in this But, I don't know. It's... This was a bad minigame to bring back. I, I don't care what anyone says. I also love how they're just using Petey Piranha now for this, as opposed to, like, you know, an actual Piranha Plant. I mean, that makes kind of sense, because at least... Petey Piranha, you can actually see him, like, move around and walk, as opposed to, like, actual Piranha Plants. But yeah, I feel like, again, we're seeing, like, P 
PD Piranha actually kind of catch up a little bit to the player. Something I feel like you would not see at all in the original Piranha's Pursuit. So I do think it's like more manageable to win this against hard computer players. But it, it's not a good minigame. That, that means very little when you consider how bad that minigame just is in general. So, yeah. Not really crazy about that game coming back. And I mean, to be fair, Nintendo never said, like, oh, we're picky, we're bringing back everyone's favorite minigames or anything like that. In fact, I think Mario Party the Top 100, like, even though, like, you know, it's called the Top 100, um, in Japan, I don't think it was called that. I think it was just called, like, All-Star Collection or something. So as a result, like, they never picked, like, Oh, this is everybody's favorite mini games or anything like that. They just kind of picked what they considered to be like very familiar and recognizable mini games. And obviously, because of all the controversy with games like Tug of War, of course people are familiar with those. So of course they'd bring that back. I don't approve of them bringing it back, but they sure did. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Um, so here's that little section I was kind of talking about with, uh, you know, just a nice little way. You can kind of uh, go in like a little circle here to uh, just continually get items and um, also see Boo as well. Because as you can see, there is a, uh, there is a door coming up. A skeleton key door. And there's a boo right beyond it. And there's also some lucky spaces and an item space, too. So, one thing you could do is, like, you could go through this section, potentially pick up another item, whether it's another skeleton key or a mushroom or something, and then just go back around to that item shop on the left, get another skeleton key or another, like, movement item or something, and then just kind of use that and just keep going around in this circle. I think that's, like, the optimal pet play for this board. This is, like, a good... Um, advantage section to use to just kind of like manipulate the game in your favor a little bit. I think uh, Wario is going to probably do the same play here. And he's going to be either stealing coins from Daisy because she's in the lead or Yoshi because he has the most. Looks like he's going the Daisy routes. Only going to get nine coins though, so I don't know if that was really worth it. I need to remember, where was Toad, by the way? Or Toadette? Yeah, I'll look next turn. <laughs> it's already too late now. Trace Race! Mario Party 4. The, uh... Side-scrolling crazy cutter, I guess you could say. I love how DK is doing this with only one hand. All the other players are doing it with two. Just shows how strong he is. That's why they call him the Strong Kong. I think my line was pretty good. I had one section where I kind of messed up a little bit, but... I think for the most part, I stuck to my line. 96! Oh yeah! Yeah, DK, do that hand clap. 